Imagine having a superpower, what would that be? And more importantly, would you be the hero or the villain? Now, personally, I totally love the ability to manipulate time. You know, imagine freezing time for power naps or, or going back to the past to grab some Bitcoin. Oh man, I would be unstoppable. But hey, there are so many other awesome powers out there like flying, laser eyes, or invincibility. Now, just like my buddy Homelander, and, and speaking of whom, he gave me this magic V to give me some superpowers. I wonder what that will do. Jordy, are you alright? I'll check in you later. Alright guys, you don't really need a magic potion to get super cool laser eyes. All we need is the magic of After Effects. Check out this awesome scene where Homelander walks through a dark building slaying bad guys left and right. I'm going to create that cool effect, minus the actual killing of course. Killing people is bad. So let's build a set and make some movie magic. Janik, what are you doing? And who is this? <laughs> We're making a set for a uh, Homelander effect and this right here is Noah, our new intern. He's all the way here from Austria. Austria, not Australia, Austria. And he's helping me out with the light setup. Hi Noah. Hi. Classic Noah. Now the original scene has Homelander as a silhouette with this ominous glowing eyes. And the only light is from his lasers or when somebody shoots him. So I want to keep the scene dark with just a few lights in the background to create a silhouette effect. However, this will create problems in post-production because I need to track his eyes. That's why I'm adding a little bit more light in the scene than necessary. In post-production, I'll make it darker with some color grading. Now once the set is finished, let's get shooting. We'll need two separate shots. A medium close-up of Jordy Lander shooting lasers and another one where he appears to float in the air with glowing eyes and firing lasers. For the medium close-up I want an angled view of Jordy's face with his eyes open. This will make the tracking easier. He'll do some acting pretending to unleash some powerful lasers for real and to sell the effect we're gonna use a real light on his face to mimic the laser's glow. Painting light in post-production is such a hassle and will always look weird. Now let's go to the floating shot. Ah! Hold on, Janik, I got a potion for that. And don't worry, this here is temp V, so it's more safe. Let me show you how you can fly with a potion. Is he dead? Nice try, Jordy, but let's stick to my method. For the floating shot, we'll have them stand on something with their heels to avoid static feet. The subject will act like they are floating and shooting lasers. Just remember to keep those eyes open and visible for better tracking. Now I also want Jordy to land on the floor, and this is actually nothing special. Just him pretending to land and standing normally on the floor. By the way, don't forget to shoot an empty shot as well, and I'm again going to use real lights to mimic any lights created by visual effects. Now I anticipate that this effect will be quite challenging, so let's quickly test it on the MSI Creator Z17 HX Studio, which we got from our sponsor MSI. The laptop's 13th gen Intel i9 processor makes it a breeze to do on-site testing, like rotoscoping or tracking, which saves me a lot of time avoiding reshoots. But something I really love when working in After Effects is the bigger screen. The 16x10 true pixel display and Quad HD Plus resolution gives me that extra workspace, which is super handy. By the way, did you know that the Creator Z17 also also has a very strong GPU, the NVIDIA RTX 4070. It's so powerful, you can work in Unreal Engine in real time without breaking a sweat. It's a beast. Now this laptop isn't only perfect for VFX work, with its 100% DCI-P3 color gamut, you can also create some beautiful color grading. But for the main question, is this laptop still portable? Well yes, due to its ultra light and slim design, with military grade durability, you can take it everywhere. Combine that with Wi-Fi 6E, a powerful 90 watt hour battery, and a special cooling system called the Vapor Chamber Cooler, it's a perfect laptop for creators, whether you're on the go or at home. If you want to know more more about the MSI Creator Z17 HX Studio, check out the link in the description below. Jordi, you still with us? Okay, let's dive into the floating shot. Place the empty shot on the bottom, now we single out Jordi for the entire clip, making him float and land. I'll use the rotoscope tool. Then it's all about animating Jordi to float and for a more random floating feeling, we can add a wiggle expression to both the X and Y values, giving us better control over the float effect in the vertical and horizontal direction. Once everything is set, I'll pre-compose it and add some flares to Jordi's eyes. Now you might wonder, why do the tracking afterwards? It's 
easier before, and you're absolutely right. But here's the thing, dynamic flares will create moving light spell over the screen, and if we do the flare stuff before the floating animation, we'll end up with static flares. So let's select the pre-comp and use the motion tracker to track each eye. Store the tracking data on separate null objects, and voila, we'll use these to link our flares to. Now we have three options for the flares. Option 1, a stock clip but it might look a bit static. Option 2, After Effects or Native Lens Flare, decent, but I prefer option 3. We'll use a flare plugin from Red Giant. These flares look amazing and are highly customizable. Now the principle of linking the flare effects is exactly the same for both. The trick is to link the flare center or the light location to the position of the null object and that's it. Customize the flare to fit the eyes and your style and boom, we are done. Jordy's floating with his eyes shining bright red. Now let's make him shoot some lasers. And this we demonstrate on the close-up shot. I'll add flares to the eyes like we did before, but let's add a little bit extra. I noticed Homelander had these cool dots in his eyes when shooting lasers, so I'll create custom pupils with shape layers and drag them to Jordy's pupils. This time I'm using the Mocha AE effect for precise tracking, and again storing all that data to a null object. With the Mocha effect, I can also use the tracking data for creating masks, which makes it super easy to composite the new pupil inside the eye. Then I'll add a glow and adjust the blending mode to screen. Okay, now for the lasers. We'll need the free saber plugin from Video Copilot, and we can simply drag it onto a solid layer and set the blending mode to screen or add. Of course, I want the lasers to start from the eyes and shoot off frame, so I'll link or parent the core start property to the null object's eye tracking data. The core end property is animated to make the laser shoot off screen. For the look, I'm increasing the core size to make the lasers bigger, and to give them more depth, we'll increase the end size, but lower the start size, so the laser is smaller at the start and thicker when it gets closer. Lastly, we'll fine tune the look with adjustments to the noise, wind, and so on. Ugh, I'm getting too old for this jet. What's this in my ear? Ah, it's goo. <laughs> Not goo. My brains are fried. Here, Jordy, you can take this. It's recovery V. Oh, recovery V. That's just what I need. Hey, this is better. <laughs> Thanks, Janik. Thanks. Nice. <laughs> Jordy, what are you doing? Nothing, Janik. I'm just heating up my coffee. May I? You got some milk with that, Janik? Ooh, that's hot. That's how you unleash your inner Homelander with some cool VFX tricks. If I went a bit too fast, don't worry, check out my After Effects beginner course for an in-depth understanding and level up your VFX skills. Thanks for watching, thank you MSI for the support, and as always, stay creative.